Rockstar. Rockstar Radio Podcast. Our biggest argument would used to be Jay Z and Eminem. Who's About. the best rapper? No, is that an argument? That, that was a fight. Is that an argument? Hold on. That was a real get fight. Up here, get up here, Rich. Are we rolling? You rolling, right? Hey, hold on. Keep coming. Get on. Uh... Get on that side. <laughs> Can you get him on that mic? Yeah. He's behind the camera. Yeah. Hold on. Get on that one. Get on that one, my G. Oh, Eminem, so the Jay Z Eminem. So back then, so okay, we had a, another friend named Nick. He used to say yes. that Andre 2000 was better than Jay Z and Eminem, and we and back then mm-hmm. I didn't comprehend that until I got older. But you got to keep in context, right? Like this is two hold on, thousand. sorry, this is too good. I, just get on his because I don't know why I'm not picking you up. Just, you you got to keep in context, right? That this was 2000 and like two 2003. 2004. This yeah, 2000, yeah, 2004. Yeah, 2004. Yeah, you know, so. The people in the what game at that time was different. Yeah, like Jay Z was the king. He was the king. Everything they did was him and Fifty Cent were like the gods. Yes. And then Kanye. game just yes. came out. Yeah. I remember this time like it was yesterday. No, it was okay. hot. It was hot. Take me game, back. Game. Uh, Take me back. Get remember remember Reggie two thousand three. Get Richard Die Trying came out. Remember that was a game changer. That was it. Shine. Shine. Oh, three was oh, getting rich. Oh, uh, fabulous. Remember, I remember all this like it Did was you yesterday. Say shine. Shine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That. Yeah. And then. Okay. This is the time where we used to. This was the Lime Wire Napster day. I remember. So it was, That was who can dig for the best music. So we used to go try to. We used to compete on who can find the best freestyles from G Unit. All right. Dipset. Uh, uh-huh. Um, Jada Kiss, Styles P, like real rap, and we used to argue about. As now, this as a producer, every day. Are you looking for the best freestyle instrumentals or the actual best bars? Well, now that I look back at it d- during the mixtape era, now I know why the artists were doing mixtapes because they were doing beats to beats that they liked. Right. And yeah, that's, oh yeah, if you listen sense. to Fifty Cent, he would always do beats to like Havoc and like the producers that he liked. So. Because he loved that sound. So now when I look back at it, I'm like, oh, that's why they did all those mixtapes. I was confused by that. But now I'm like, we're kind of in that realm of people taking your music and remixing. And I feel like when they do that, that makes it fire. Right. You know? Your world hit it, man. <laughs> Jay Z or Eminem? <laughs> so I'm still on that. Hold on. No, because bro. you gotta remember, like, the time when Eminem was just coming <laughs> in. Like, sorry, 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 sorry. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. But you got to remember, though, right, and, and, and to add on what he's saying, right, like, 50 Cent, those guys were making, like, all those mixtapes, like, the Invasion, like, all those who East Coast. Kid. Yeah, the oh who, God. shout God. to who, who Kid, J45, that's right. my man. Right. Sorry, but, you know, that's the guy. Right. Like, they were doing stuff that nobody was doing, and I think now, when you see these kids dropping mixtapes and EPs, that's what Eminem and 50 Cent, those guys were doing. Like, that was the, the blueprint of the time, so... That's what we were listening to in college. Like, we weren't really commercial. We were really like, my man Lamar, shout out to Lamar. He always was downloading the heat. Yeah, so facts. we knew all the aftermath every, every producers. Mi- every, we were we West Coast guys. Everything. So we every knew every tech. single person. Like, high tech. When high tech was high, like, we were just on it. Like, we were on it. And so our arguments were so much pop. It was like the production and the quality of the music that you were making. So like when we were breaking down, it was well, like was that when when Ho was using like No ID and like not uh, even this was, was, was Black Pharrell. Album. That this was, was Black Album. Black Ho. Album. Okay. Pharrell album, you know, production Just and Blaze. Just Blaze. Yeah. Like the right. Dynasty was like still hot, you know, like Change Clothes. What just album? Came what, out. Which album was uh, Jay? What, what album was uh, You Don't Know on? That one in the, in the remix. The blue, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah. Kanye and all that. Yeah. Was that, right. was that that time? Was that a, what year? I was a senior. That was, I was a senior in high school at that time. That was, 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 that was 2001, 2002. Yeah, I was a junior in okay. high school at that yeah. time. That was right before. Yeah, I graduated, I graduated uh, 2002. Change clothes was when we were in college. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, miss. That was college Blueprint for us. Two, right. Mm. All that was doing. Yeah, so I guess the bars around that time was all East Coast. It was all East yeah, Coast. Yeah, it was West all Coast East Coast. Well, Game, remember. That's what's so changed. That, right. Yeah, when Game came out, that's when we got excited. Yeah, I remember like, when we had Are the you guys fresh, from the West? Uh, I'm originally from Louisiana, but okay. I've been living in California. Right. Majority, you know, they say you live somewhere more than 10 years. That's where you're from. Am so I'm, I'm from California. I'm from Sacramento. Oh, Sacktown? Sacktown? Yeah. Dang, Sacramento. Yeah. Nah, that's right, back. Just some fun, fun fact stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But wait, I didn't, still didn't get it. Jay-Z or Eminem? Oh, for right now? If I'm just okay, if you had to look at it now, get back over there, bro. We <laughs> 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 gotta get you a, a wireless, man. Just walk around. Right. Walk around with it. If I had to choose right now as right a now. grown man, Hove or M? I'd, I'd, I'd still have to go with Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. it's what, like, it speaks to me. Yeah. So it's Mike just, and Keys? Yeah. I'm gonna always go with Jay Z, but 
on, if it's on some, it's 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 yeah, it's Jay Z, but Eminem is different, man. When you talk about, you know, I'm sure you guys did a million interviews. Everybody's asking your top, you know, goats or whatever. The, do you do they always change? Because I mean, like, if somebody would ask me my top ten MCs or top five or whatever, I feel like they're always changing. Like, the, they might not be the same five next week. You, you know what I mean? I, I I feel like with the top five and all that, it's like basketball players. It's like you can like. 20 of your favorite basketball players they don't have to be in no order you know because everybody has they like did you guys see because we're in a, for a 50th uh, anniversary of hip-hop right now it's the mm -hmm. big thing this year did you guys yeah. see that list that they came out with the billboard 50 top 50 of of mc somebody pull that yeah. up can you try to pull i didn't up? see that one. Yeah. So it's billboard it's right uh this year i guess 2023 20, 20, is the the we actually uh, we actually did one of them we did the we helped the rolling stone we did the rolling stone to make their list no, we mean? we help um, categorize the 50th anniversary for the Rolling Stone for that. Categorize the 50th anniversary list. The top hundred songs. Oh, songs. West, West Coast. It was West Coast. Oh, West Coast. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. All right, let's go through them a little bit. There, this is gonna be a lot, but actually, let's go to the, let's go just let's skip to the top yeah, ten or twenty because it's a lot. It's on here. all. This is all just hip hop. This is uh. So this is Billboard's top 100 hip hop artists and of all who, time. It, it, you want to know who's at number one? You want to start at 20? Yeah, right, start at number one. Nah, we got to start at 20. We got to go down because the 20, number one is like the number one. All right, oh, right. you want to go there and get from, from best to worst? Nah, go ahead. You can go do, the, do 20. 20. Yeah, yeah, do the 20. Okay, all right. Hold on. Let's go. All right, 29. I'm glad they put Lauren Hill up on here, too. Because everybody says uh, she can't be on that list because she a singer. But yeah, she, but she, she, she's a oh, real MC, she's though. She is. Real MC, she's, yeah. She can really rap. If you know, you know. She, <laughs> yeah, has, yeah. she has the bars. All right, let's start in, at number 20. 20's Big Daddy Kane. And just give me like a yay or nay if he, if he should belong at the I, top. I would, I would think, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of Jay-Z's favorite rappers. So he should be at the top. Word. Okay. Top 10. If he's one of the originators, if you're talking. Yeah, if he that, is. We got to talk about that because it's like we... You know, there's eras. That's why I said that's a confusing thing when you're talking about, like, the top. So, Well, it, I mean, well, there's, there is eras, but this is why, like, okay, so we're celebrating 50 years of hip-hop this year. So this, is the, this is the top 100 greatest MCs of all time. So now we're not breaking down genres or, or decades or anything like that, or eras. This is just overall. Mm -hmm. This is an overall list from the root to the fruit. You right. feel me? Like everything. He's supposed to be at the, a little bit higher. You'll put him above 20. Yeah, just out of this and, is out of a hundred now. Because you're basing on everything. You're high. basing it on bars and the fact that he was an originator. Uh, uh, one of that the matters. Years. It all that matters. matters. Yeah, that matters. All right, 19. We got Missy Elliott. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. it's it's like Crickets, bro. because it, yeah, it's uh, you know what those lists is like. I feel like if you're gonna do a list, right, right, it has to be from the official rappers. Like they have to, yeah. Well, they can't like, rank, they can't rank oh, themselves, huh? They can't rank themselves. But you can't. But you, but you can't be. But you, you can never be by. It's like a. It's like people that pick music that have been around the mu Some people that pick music they've been around, they know it. I, I mean, feel like the people that are doing it, wh like, what's your background? Well, I mean, they're, <clears throat> it's Billboard, so, I mean, I don't know. Let's, is the, that, let's is do that the top count? five. You want me to skip? Five, yeah, because top five will give you a better consensus right, of, like— Let's get to top ten. Hold know, on. Yeah, that was, that that was nice. Yeah, overall, yeah like, 20 is what like— kind of what it is? 20, <laughs> okay. 20 is, like, everybody that's, like, they want to give love to, but— Hey, I'm passing up right, LL Cool J know. at number 14. Rakim is 13, one. bro. Yeah. But see, uh, it, it, a lot hey, of that is based on commercial success. Which one was the Andre 3000 fan? Yeah, one, of, my, yeah, one of our boys, yeah. Oh, okay, he's at number 12. All right, hold on. Oh, they got Ye at number 11. That's tough. Yeah. Okay, uh, number 10, 10 and up. Oh, shit, I hit some. I don't know if I had a... Oh, my point's coming up. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, here go the, the Number 10, there the you pop go. Pop-ups. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, that's 11. All right, uh, number 10, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> hey, speak on it, man. What speak a on no, it, you know? no comment. Dang. Over Kanye, though? Yeah. Over Kanye. No Kanye. Yeah, That's I wouldn't crazy. do that either. I wouldn't do that either. That's kind of crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, who yeah. is, like, we got to, like, they got to start putting the people's names. What if they're putting up? Yeah, that's the What if they're putting up numbers, though? Billboard like, can be anybody. Who, who do you think is sold more between Nikki and, because uh, Billboard sometimes goes by numbers. I still say yay. Yay. All right. Uh, number nine, Snoop. And number nine, Snoop Dogg. 
He should be higher. He's man. always on my top five, like for, for life. For That's life. My favorite rapper all time. Yeah, he top five for me for life. Favorite. That one never changes. Why they doing it? That's my favorite rapper all time, Snoop Dogg. But what are they like, basing it on? Yeah, though? what is this based is, on? I think he's the most popular rapper of all time. No, he's the most famous, yeah, most popular. Right, he's the best of all time. Everything. It's not even. It's not even argument. But he's still putting out fire music today in 2023. Yeah, it is. I think I think uh, Snoop Dogg is probably the one hip hop artist uh, that's lasted. Was, shoot, they, like, one pop artist, just artist in general that's lasted the longest, has been the most relevant yeah, for, for a, sure. as mm-hmm. long. For sure. I mean, he's been like three decades, four decades now. That's tough. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the most difficult thing to do in music. Our our grandmas know who Snoop yeah, Dogg is. Yeah, yeah, he's a household name. He's a household <laughs> name. <laughs> All right, uh, number. Oh, see, he's number nine. Number eight. Drake is at number eight. I gotta see who's in front of him. Right now, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. now it's like okay. Yeah. Hold, hold for comment. Hold for comment. Drake's at number eight. Okay, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Lil Wayne is right above him at seven. Remember, this is Billboard's top one hundred greatest MCs of all, of all time. Lil Wayne's top five deadline. Yeah. Wayne's top five deader line? Facts. Yeah, I would yeah. say that. I would say so. I would say so. I'll be biased on that. I am from Louisiana, so I'm going to guess that. Remember, now you remember Reggie? Oh, that was another thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was an argument. You know, I used to get clowned, too, in college for playing Lil Wayne music. Why? Huh? Because they, you know, I'm the, I, screwed music in Louisiana. I brought, I brought that. What school did you say you went to? State. Yeah, First, but they, you know they were straight. If it wasn't if it wasn't Fifty Cent, right, Doctor Dre or anything of that nature, they didn't right. want to hear it right. at that right. time. Right. Or Jay Z. Go like so Lil Wayne thing. at this time was like bubbling with the mixtapes. Okay. So they didn't see it yeah. until they seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah. that was like my only little vouch is that. Uh, well, he's top a, five though. Okay, he's, <laughs> he's seventy-seven here. <laughs> Uh, let's go. Number six, the Notorious B.I.G. is at number six. Whoa, he's supposed to be. Dang, number six? <laughs> Yo, he got Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that's Come on, a... my boy. So, so we'll, what? That's one of the greatest that's rappers. The greatest that's rapper. crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What? Hypnotized first name. Dog. He, he, he. <laughs> Come on, dog. That's, that's I'll keep him top ten. I don't know. Who's, if he's who's in front of Biggie? Uh, number five. He's number six. All right. Number five is Eminem. That's your huh? boy, number five, Eminem above I Biggie. Like him, but I don't know about, see, that's just numbers, because Biggie didn't sell enough albums because he only had two albums. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? I, I think I'm Biggie. Saying, without a doubt. Best. Without a doubt, yeah. Okay, number five is Eminem. All right, uh, number four, Pac. Tupac at number four. I mean, Pac is like a Snoop for me. He's is old, this a joke? Are you trying to be funny? Nah, man. Nah, <laughs> I man. Think you're, 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 this nah, this man. has got to be a joke. Come on. Where would you put Pac in your... Probably one or two. Yeah. Okay, I was about to say, I he's mean, top just, five for me, but... Yeah, one or two. I, yeah, I don't know about the, the the order, but he's always top five for me for sure. Number three? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, they put Nas at number three. Nas. At number three, not above over Pac. Not over Pac. Oh, no, no. I, I wouldn't put, hey, put him over Pac. You guys are producers. No. What do you guys think about this? I, you know, uh, I've been. Uh, I watch a lot of interviews uh, and podcasts with Nas and about Nas, and I, I get the same consensus. A lot of people say that, uh, you know, he's like one of the worst beat pickers of all time. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you guys think? I mean, of all his projects, like, I, I don't know. I wouldn't know one way or the other. I, I enjoy his music. I enjoy his beats, but like you know, I mean that matters. It's, that it's, that, it's, that, it's that, go, that goes that goes in. It's, it's, it's been said. Like his first album. Like when you talk about Nas, you're like, oh, you know, it's a. Uh... Illmatic, Illmatic, yeah, like you. Yeah, that's yeah, all Illmatic. people really talking about. Besides, those were the best. Illmatic those. was the beats. Uh, Illmatic the beats. was with the slaps. Yeah. After that, I think is when they. And that's what they're talking about. Yeah. My son was pretty good. Right. I can't really think anything outside of that. So that's why I think he gets his pass. Was like, oh, he had a. But he, and, but that that verse, that that still mad that ether, that, that ether, still, still mad yeah, right. yeah, yeah, still mad is hard. Yeah, yeah. What was the joint off of still mad? What was the ether? That's what I'm saying, and like that was a game changer for Nas. Yeah, okay. That was like, yeah, Jay Z, like he had Jay Z. Choco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the first time. Like, that was the first time everybody in New York was like, "Nah, we going with Nah." He had him, <laughs> he had him by the jugular. Yeah. yeah sure. Hey, Mike and Keys are in here. All right, uh, number two. Uh, you want to call it uh, before I tell you? And who's that number two? Go ahead, call it. I don't even know at this point. Yeah, you didn't, if it's not Biggie or Pac, I don't know who it is. Huh? No, he, he's uh, he's alive. He's very much alive. Who Kendrick? Yeah. Kendrick's at number two, all time. Do you think he's too? It's too early to give him the all time. 
you know, crown. That's like that's that's right, that's next to number one. Is it too soon to crown him that? I don't know. I feel like they. I feel like it's like in sports, right? Like it's everyone is like Hall of Fame. Can I ask you something? So look, you know? if they're putting Kendrick up there, like why wouldn't? And I'm sure he's on this list somewhere, but he's nowhere near these guys. Why wouldn't Drake be top ten? If we're talking bars and hits, like everything, he's going to get the Midas touch. You know what I mean? Everything he's touching is is number one single, biggest rapper in the world right now, $100 million crib. You feel me? Like, that, Iron Drake's with the bars. He's with the yeah. bars. He Ghost, got the bars. Yeah. He Ghost, got riding, bars. Ghost riding on something, but I'm not, I don't care about that. I think that's what it is right there. I think a lot of people will say his camp is a real what, big what, part of his success. Why do you think he he's never like really mentioned top ten? I mean, Kendrick is as new as an artist as Drake is, and with less work. I just think Kendrick's more of a, like really? like a ra- like a rapper. He's a rapper's rapper. Yeah, like you he's respected by rap. Like you know, he's Drake like a rapper's rapper. Like Eminem is gonna go back and be like, "What did Kendrick say?" Like you know, mm-hmm. so that's like a rapper's rapper. Rapper's rapper. Yeah, I get it. Makes sense. Are right, y'all ready for this? Uh, Jay Z at number one. Oh yeah, ho! Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not mad oh. at that. Is that a good top ten for you? Is no, that it's not a good top ten, but I'm not mad at Jay Z being number one. Jay Z being number one. I don't know if I'll put because I remember Reggie. You know, remember we used to go and like. No, literally I, study his lyrics yeah, to a T, I mean, like so bad, I used to go like to this, play, like. like my, volume, mm-hmm. my, my lifetime value one and two. If you haven't listened to those Jay Z albums, like those ones, you gotta go back and listen to. Damn. <laughs> can't hear you, bro. I'm gonna bring up the lyrics. Oh, okay, yeah, you're good, you're like, good. if you gotta listen to like, like, uh, you gotta go back and listen to like in my lifetime volume one and like in my lifetime volume two, and then that will like give you like the foundation of like how Jay Z became who he is today. Like, you can't listen to like Jay Z now and just be like, what? You know what I mean? You have to kind of, like go back and do the research, kind of like. The first Kanye West albums, like if you don't go back and listen, to, like you know, Twisted Dark Fantasy mm-hmm. and Late Registration, all those, yeah. and really listen to it, then you really not you're not really appreciating the music because now these guys are just they're rich, they're big time, and you still get quality music, but like that was when they were hungry, you know what yeah. I mean? It's kind of like high with them, right? Like they've already done the Hunger Games, they've already done it. We're talking about Mike and Keys here. They've Mike already done Keys. the Hunger Games, like you know what I mean? And so now it's just time to really go out there and really what do you stay guys in that think, boat, uh, you know? What do you what do you think your Hunger Games were? I mean, as far as like you you talking about being in the trenches, right? You know, on on the grind, getting getting your 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 voices heard, your styles heard, your beats heard, trying to make a name in the, in the industry. Because he uh, you said something that kind of registered with me earlier, Reggie. About uh, I wrote it down because I knew I was gonna forget it. When you described them, you said uh, they're like the most unknown known producers, is what you called, is what you said. I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, because. Myself as well. Like, I, I know I heard the name, and then when he said he was going to bring you in, I was like, dope. And then I started getting a lot more familiar with you guys' work and your production and your history. But I don't. I wasn't there from the beginning, mm-hmm. you know? Um, do you get that a lot? The most known, unknown? Yeah, you know, because we always focus on the work. We came in the music game where the producer was to be there to produce and not, like, you know, necessarily, like, be on camera and do all that. But the music game changed, so... Once the internet and music became basically free, we had to kind of promote ourselves as artists instead of just the guys in the background, you know? So that was like... No, oh, yeah, I mean, he's right. As far as, you know, the work, that's what we was concerned about the most. Like, we was trying to build a sound. Right. And th- there was times where, you know, we lived at the studio, literally, like, stayed there, didn't have an apartment. So I would say that those were our hungry times. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> have you guys read your EPK? Do you know uh, the one that you sent me? Mm-hmm. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? Mm-hmm. I really want to read this to you right now because this is like, I don't know who writes this shit for you, but <laughs> somebody got to write this, something about me because this is amazing. All right, so look, this is this is on your bi- biography. This is what it says about you guys on your EPK. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says, uh, when discussing... Did you write this? No, no, okay. no, but it's very poignant. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, uh, when discussing the, tempor- the contemporary sound of Los Angeles, one would be remiss... To omit production duo Mike and Keys, formerly the Futuristics, which I want to talk about that, mm-hmm. uh, known for creating luxurious tapestries. See how they let's see how they describe you guys. They are known for creating luxurious tapestries of brilliantly composed, surgically precise sonic poetry. It's clear that the duo's 
proprietary potion can only be achieved by their undeniable chemistry. Bro, hey, what a, like... Shout out to Sophie. Well, goddamn, yeah. who's yeah. that? Who's Sophie? Yeah, Sophie. She's a she's a that? she's an OG. In she the, like she's the, PR, a G, the, the Yeah, PR she's or? like a marketing genius. Wow. PR. She worked for Nipsey, Cameron, Beyonce. She's she's a she's Yo, a big Sophie. Time, so. Sophie, you got to come to Riverside. Write me up a little something. You know, knick <laughs> <laughs> knack that boy from Riverside. You know, hit with a silky smooth voice and uh, yo man, she got them words. Yeah. But when you guys hear, <clears throat> you know, words ex uh, explained, uh, words said that explain you guys like that, like how does that make you feel? Do you do you when you hear that description of yourself in its totality? Are you like, bet, you know, like, is that, is that, do you, I mean, not that are you deserve, I'm sure you're deserving of it, but do you feel that? Do you feel that? I think so. I mean, the work speaks for itself, you know what I'm of saying? Of course, of course. And we went through a lot of hard times to, to get to that point. Yeah. So everything that she's said, saying. We deserve that. Yeah. We deserve that. Everything I, she's saying is, is on point. For I sure. love it. And we always cared about like. The like when you think of luxury, luxury just means quality. That's what people, you know, luxury is a, is a quality thing, you know. So we've always cared about like the quality of music. So we've always wanted to get the respect of the high level people that do it on a high level. Sorry, can you close that? I gotta get up on the background. Go ahead. I'm listening. So, um, yeah, like that's all luxury is to me is just like high quality music. And I, I think earlier you were, I, you're asking about like we should have more songs and that's reason why we don't do that because we want to keep it more like it's like when you go to a really good really good restaurant and get some food you don't get a big proportion it's gonna yeah be, it's got it, a little uh, yeah it's gonna be really but it's gonna taste really good right it's gonna make you want more right. so that's kind of like our style and when right now you know I know you're not chasing the cloud so you want the music to speak for itself uh, reading down your EPK and your bio, your bio um, it looks like the Grammy noms. Um, did you guys win any or like? No, we haven't. We so haven't that's, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted because yeah. you guys been there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we close. Won, won, uh, yeah. Best rap album for Victory Lap. Uh, best rap album for Food and Liquor uh, to Lupe, yeah. which I didn't even know. Bro, yeah. see. 2012. Wow. Yeah, that was our struggle time. Do you guys <laughs> go to all these Grammy awards? Like, nah. You know, it's um, it's it's just it. To, to us, we don't really care about those things. It's more about, like, knowing that we can even be a part of those things. It's, that's cool. I us. mean, to me, you know, when I started getting into entertainment and radio and stuff, Grammys was, like, my super goal. Like, not that I was going to do music originally, but, you know, I, I always wanted to rock the red carpet. You know, I grew up watching it. And I, I always felt like if I was on stage and did a presenting uh, award, like, I made it in some way. Like, did you guys, did you, have you ever thought about it that way? Not necessarily for the clout of the accolades, but just actually being there in such, um, you know, a uh, monumentous, uh, you know, legendary venue of accolades. We're, we're like one of those people, like, you're not going to know if we're excited about it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we'll be like... Like, I, I guess you can say, like, he expect it. That's something Reggie would say, like, nah, what are you talking about? Like, you're supposed to be here. So that's kind of how we, like, treat it. We don't, you know? Like, I don't know. I, me, I feel like I used to feel like that when I was younger. Like, you want to be there. Yeah. I used to feel like that. But now, as I get older, when people are coming up to you talking about your music changed my life, that's way well, yeah, more it means, different. It means, yeah. it means more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, way, way more. more. Yeah. How long you guys been rocking with each other? Is it since the college day? Well, I, mean, I knew Re I knew Reggie first, but Keys met in two, like, like right after college, like right after like when we left college. So I'd say, up. yeah, like, like two thousand five, two thousand six. Yeah. yeah. Then we started like rocking t officially, like professionally together like 2008 that's what i was gonna ask yeah and was it like you were you guys both doing production was it like a solo venture and then you found each other and yeah. it was like yo let's do it we a was thing. a big group yeah. it was like 12 of us living in a house okay that all did music or were inspiring nah, nah. Uh, nah. <laughs> i was still in college at the time i hadn't came back down yet. Uh, they mm -hmm. were all back down doing their thing okay yeah and we just we was around people that you know was inspired by the music and like 
Keys was the first person out of our crew to get a, a real professional placement. So when Keys got the placement, that motivated everybody. You remember the, what it was, the first placement? It, yeah, it was 50 Cent. It was off of uh, Before I Self-Destruct. It was his last album that he had with Interscope. Okay. Was it what, what kind of placement was it? Would you? Uh... It was just a song that he had on his album. Did you? And you made the beat for it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But that album had all our favorite producers on there. So that yeah. we was like, oh, to, to be nobody know and to be on that level with the, the guys that we talked about every day was kind of crazy. You know, like. Did it feel like when you got that placement, did it feel like kind of that whole when, 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 when he make it, we all make it? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, it felt like, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm doing this for us. Like, this right. is for all of us. This ain't just for me. This is for the future. So you never, you never had like a, uh, what label was that, 50s, on that album? What, uh, it was okay, so yeah. you, didn't, you didn't have like a, a rep or a somebody in, at Interscope come to you after you made that beat and placed it and saying, yo, uh, Keys, we love your style. Uh, we love what you do. We want to take you here to the next level, but you got to, you know, we want you. Like, did that, were you ever afraid of that? Because it is, it's a unit, you know what I mean? That didn't, act, that didn't happen at all, though. Like, there, there was nobody that came to, to yeah. me and was like, oh, okay. I'm about to bring you in. It didn't happen like that. Okay, cool. I'm glad, man, because you guys are where you're supposed to be right now, you know what I mean? And, like, in the beginning, uh, it's, it's Mike and Keys. I'm, I, I want to ask, like, who kind of had what role, but I'm assuming you was on, you had the, the keys. Oh, yeah, I, I could and get down a little bit. Well, and he was, so... I was the person in the group that le learned how to make music last. Keys was already in rhythm, but I, I learned fast. Okay. So I was the fast learner out the group, but like I'm the drummer. You know, I play my I play drums in my dad's church. So Word. just by default, I, you know, drums have been, you know, that's his nickname, J Keys. So obviously, you know, he knows how to do some good things on the keys. So Word. That's Word. kinda like our, you know. Yeah, that's like no one calls him by his name. Just keys. Yeah, just keys. <laughs> <laughs> when did you guys first start getting that vibe? Like you know, when you started making music together, you know, as a collaborative, you're living in a house with twelve dudes. You know, he got that placement. You're starting to get you know your fingers you know wet with the you know the production and the drums and like it, I mean, how how much later until you guys started finally really getting that chemistry? You're like where you know where Mike and Keys became a thing. Well, we, it it motivated us, but. On the flip side, we had a studio with Exhibit and Be Real from Cypress Hill. They brought us in to work. Okay. So they was like the first like celebrities that we ended up working with in L.A. Be Real and Exhibit. Mm -hmm. How yeah. did they find you? Um, one of our our OGs that was our manager at the time, his name is Reese, he was ex Exhibit's right hand. And yes. we were living with a DJ named DJ Fingers. And he would go back and forth to L.A. and San Diego, and he'd be like, yo, I'm going to the studio with Exhibit. So we went to the studio and kind of, like, never left. Like, they took, a like, a real liking to us. And that was, like, our first introduction in, like, the big leagues, like, really being with famous people. You know, George mm -hmm. Lopez might walk in or, like, you don't know who's going to walk in. So that, like, kind of prepared us on, like, how to be professional. Like, they literally taught us how to be professional, like, mm -hmm. in the business. Like, right. You know, Exhibit was doing, um, remember when they were doing the remakes of the homes and stuff like that? So like he cribs? was really on ABC. Okay. It was like a, kind of like a pin my ride, but like it was a like, house makeover. It was like a house no, makeover, yeah, right. but he was on ABC and every weed company was coming to meet with Be Real. So we just learned so much about, like, you know, people think it's just music, but this is a real business, and you oh, got to be professional as possible. So was, those guys were very professional, and we learned that from them. That's why I was going to ask how you guys learned that side of the business, the music business side. Like, you know, because, you know, it's, it's, once you get your placement and you guys start, you know, you, oh, you create your bank account or you, yeah. you, you get your uh, your business, uh, well, your LLC or whatever it is, however you make it, you know, you start making a little bit of bread. Um, then you start learning about well, you know, split sheets, you know, how mm -hmm. much you're going to get, how much you're going to get. Like, did, did somebody come in and give you that game? Did you guys have to Google? Like, how does that? Like a mix of everything. Yeah, like, we, we learn. We mainly learn from experience, though. We We did a lot of. You know, missed trials. We made mistakes and all that, but we learned from it. Right. The best uh, 
what they how, how you say it, the best ex experience is the like, best teacher yeah yeah, yeah so you went to a school of, school of experience yeah, yeah exactly so, like, we know so it's like no manager nobody can tell us what we already didn't been through you know what i'm saying so Let's fast forward a little bit, um, and I don't know. Uh, you tell me, are you are you? You guys must have. I'm sure you've been in a million interviews, and I don't want to be another guy to ask you about the same thing. But I I, I come at these interviews as a, like a fan, you know. Especially mm -hmm. now that I know who you guys are and what you guys have done. Um, are you guys tired of talking about Victory Lap? Because I want to talk about it. It's such a no. huge monumental. I mean, it's, uh, no. it's part of us. So yes. we ain't, you know, it's, it's such it's a part huge of part of your story. I feel yeah. like in the Mike and Keys book, that chapter is like, yeah. you know, this is yeah. long. Uh, what a great album, man! Just what? Uh, how many songs on there did you guys produce? I mean, you guys are pretty much ninety percent of the album. Are you... Yeah, we did thirteen out of sixteen. Right. Oh, damn. So this this album to me, I feel like a <clears throat> it's one of my favorite hip hop uh, compositions I've ever heard. I mean, this reminds me of like All Eyes on Me, Pac, or like a Life mm -hmm. After Death. It's just it's no skips, but. You know, it's got everything sonically from like the the gangster shit that that West Coast. Last time that I checked. Last time that I checked, check, check. it was five chains on my neck. It was no smut on my breath. To uh, you know, uh, almost like a like a real, like R and B uh, gospel kind of uplifting with the what's that Marsha Ambrosia uh, track? Oh, uh, real big. Oh, real big. Real big. Yeah. I'm gonna do a real big. Real big, real big. I know one day I would do it real big. I mean. How did how did you guys even begin to know which direction to take for Nip? Are you guys in there with him? And he's like, yo, this is the vibe I'm on today. Make me something that feels good. Like, take me to church. Or do you guys, as a, as a duo, come to him prepared with, like, 13 tracks or 30, 300, and he picks those out of, like, how did, because those songs are just songs that, like, feel like they are meant to be. They're not just beats. They're not just, like, a, like a eight bar on a loop. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? These are compositions. These are like mm -hmm. melodic instrumentations of a. Uh, it's beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I listen to the album. I think it's amazing that I'm talking to you guys right now. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm a big fan. So just like, how did you know? Explain that whole the birth of those tracks. Uh, wow. Uh, I <laughs> I would say like when we first started working with Nip was like around the Crenshaw days. I was like 2012. Did you work? Did you produce for him before Victory Lap? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So oh, okay. we produced like five songs on Crenshaw, like "Check Me Out," "Summertime in That Cutlass," "H Town in My Cup," um, "Blessings." So like we at two thousand, like we met Nipsey in like two thousand nine, but we didn't start like actually working together till like two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, and that was like the start. And the first song we ever did with him together was Check Me Out. Mm -hmm. So that was Check like our out. introduction to Nip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a studio with him. So we started, it, it had got to a point to where he would pick us up. We didn't have a car. So he would pick us up. He didn't even have a driver's license. This is when we knew that we were going to be working with Nipsey for a long time. He didn't even have a driver's license. So he would pick us up and take us to the studio all the way from Inglewood, um, you know, and take us to the studio and we would just work on music every day and then that went from building to us getting a studio together once we got a studio together that's when our relationship creatively built like what you're saying like he knows us and we know him it had, it had got to a point to where he was like you guys do it it was to that point like it's in your hands like I trust yeah you. like he's yeah. like and you know with artists and producers like usually the artists usually don't trust the producer so in this instance, like Nipsey really trusted us with the music, with everything. And so that's that's what you're hearing, him trusting us and like, you know, and we wanted to show him, you know, we put our our love and heart energy into the music. It just feels like such <clears throat> a mature album, you know, both on a, from a producer standpoint and from an artist standpoint. Um, what was like his his he had the um, those mixtapes up until then? Mm -hmm. um, his mixtapes was the Marathon series. Mm -hmm. Did you, you guys produce tracks on those? Nah, so we didn't. Nah, we didn't. We didn't. We, we started on Crenshaw up. So Crenshaw. Was Crenshaw the one that had uh, the, the crisscross joint? What was it? Uh, nah, that's his. That's, that's old, old. That's man. like his first. The That's like his first tape, you know I think. About? Crenshaw, the, 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 uh, the $100 CD. Yeah. 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 That, that was in 2013. Yeah. 
Yeah. Pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. Man, you guys have come so far, man. <clears throat> yeah. And it just feels like you guys are, I, I don't know, I, I know you know that, how far you've come, but I feel like you guys are still, like he said, just, you know, in the in the trenches or whatever you call it, and you're still on that grind, on that hustle uh, to do bigger and better things. Uh, what, what's the goal? <laughs> to be honest with you, like, you know, in, like, it, music changes so much, so we don't know when our blessings are going to, you know, come, but I know we've been working a lot, and... You know, hopefully we c we'll see what happens. You know, that's all we can really do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm listening. I promise. He's just texting me a question for you. Uh, he said, uh, "Do they know why at the end of Crenshaw, the last song has three tracks? In, <clears throat> excuse me, in one long track." I always wonder. Do you know what he's talking about? On Crenshaw. Oh, you, oh, you the oh you yeah. The oh yeah. You're talking he about says, at the end. Oh, of, the, the, the slug. Oh, the yeah. end of yeah. and Crenshaw, right? Yeah. So, 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 I for, think, people, for I, people watching, real quick, just to clarify what we're asking. At the end of Crenshaw, mm -hmm. the last song on there, it's like three tracks and one long track. That's the one with the Dahi song. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's Crenshaw and Slug. So yeah. like, what's up with that? That's a good question, man. Man, <laughs> um, you know what's crazy is Jeremiah was supposed to be on that. On one of the on that I think song. he is, I think he is on this on song. on one of the songs on the three. But the I just singer think, Jeremiah. Yeah, okay. he was supposed to be on one of the songs in the three songs you're talking about, right? It's like the, a rock song, right? It's like the ending of the project, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I just think he did. I just think because I don't think nobody knows that project was supposed to be Victory Lap. So when we were working on Crenshaw, we thought it was Victory Lap. So that's probably why those songs are blended because he was trying to do like some album. How long was it? If it's three tracks? 12, 12 minutes, like yeah. A 12 minute track. Yeah. yeah. But it's obviously three second. tracks. Yeah. It's, three separate it's, productions. It's, I feel like people get to miss like the second song, which is like one of my favorite songs. Yeah. No, nah, you're right. And, and nobody really catches that. You're right. What's the name of that joint? Crenshaw and Slash. Yeah. yeah. It's called Crenshaw and Slash. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm going to listen out on the way home. It starts off with pianos, like. Start He's with, like yeah. talking. Yeah. Do you have like a, uh, I mean, out of all the, uh, you guys have done so much stuff, but I want to stick to just Victory Lap for now. I'm, I'm wigging out. Uh, I, what's like your your joint on there? Is it just one that you're like, remember on that one? I told you, to, and it worked, and we uh, did it. You <laughs> know status I mean? symbol three. Oh, well, sucker proof. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah. That so was the first time, like, that, right now. I, that was the yeah. first time, like, we, like, was like, yo, if you don't rap on this, like, you're not a real rapper. Like, that was the first time we ever, like, you told You it. told Nip that? Yeah. <laughs> that was the first time I was like, You told Nip, you? if you don't rap on this, you're not a real rapper? Yeah, I was like, you're not. I was like, Talk you're not a shit. gangster. Talk I said shit. everything that I feel like he wouldn't like to hear because he likes competition. So, like, he literally jumped in there. It's right here. You can even hear it in his verse. He's talking to us in the verse. <laughs> And what nobody knows is we took that vocal from a Crenshaw song yeah. to make the hook. What is that vocal from? That's from it, was, it was from Mailbox Money. Yeah, actually. that vocal was Count from Count Up Mailbox. That Loot. It was from Count Up That Loot. I just want to hear a little bit of his first. Uh... I don't give a fuck what you niggas done. <laughs> is that, that's why when you told him on. You feel me? See how he start off the raps? Jay Prince. Yeah, that, was, that was the only way to get him to rap was to challenge him. Challenge him, yeah. So that we used to have to do that. But that was the. Hey, sometimes you, you gotta do that. To that. That's why he started off like that aggressive. Because we was like, you're. Because we have been in there working hard and we're like, man, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, where's the that aggression? Me, like, have you guys ever heard that, uh, that DMX story where he's in the studio with the. Uh, Bald dude, was it from Murder Inc.? Uh, um, Irv Gotti. Irv Gotti's oh, got yeah. him in the studio, and he's like, just wasn't giving it to him. So Irv told him something very similar. He's like, "Yo, you're you're not coming with it, man. Give me that shit." Mm -hmm. And that's the beginning of that song where he's like, "It's not a fucking game." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why he came yeah, in like yeah, that because he yeah. was pushing him. You got to right. challenge the one thing I've learned about working with artists. Any artist, <laughs> they can be an R and B singer, a rapper, a gospel artist. You have to challenge them to do the best possible that. That they can do. Mm. And usually if you challenge them and they take the challenge, they do it. If they don't, then they're not they're not going to do it. So I, we knew with Nipsey, having a studio with him, you have to, like, trick him. Especially a lot of artists, <clears throat> you got to trick him and, like, 
make them, you know, do it or if not, he'll to just listen to the beat. That's a little producer secret. That's like you know you gotta have talk a, them gems, yeah baby. you gotta have a I'm degree. I'm here soaking up game. You know yeah, what you mean? gotta have a degree in psychology working with artists because you know what people don't understand about artists is like they're human too. So they might come in studio having a bad day, and you gotta recognize these things, and you gotta know when to you know build with them and you know have a conversation, and then that's when you get the best out of them. That's why it's so much better, man, having a. Uh you know, a relationship with an artist like that where you guys know each other on a person, on a friendship level, and with them actually being in studio with you versus emailing the, the, oh, uh, the, the vocals, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's got to be the worst as a producer, That's... man, because there's no magic in that. There's no, uh, you know? You right. can't change nothing right away. No, right away, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's something about being in a booth right next to each other or just in the same room where you, know, you see the look on his face and you know when you... He knows when you're not feeling something, and vice versa. Oh, and yeah, yeah. It's more, it's more, it's more than just a, you know, it's it's just the overall energy in the room. It's, it, it's, it, I can't explain. It's like between you guys, it's like a kind of just a kinetic, just a electricity right. where you guys can feel what one wants versus the other, and you just can't get that over email, you know. Right. Yeah. It's like it's like being on a team. Like right. You can't be on a team through email. You gotta yeah. be together. You gotta nah, be together. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, all that time you guys spent with him, you know, uh, you got to give me some gems, man. Like, uh, all the game you must have soaked up from Nip, dude. I mean, oh, yeah. he was the most different person we ever probably worked with or, like, even been around. Like, he was a different, like, I'll tell you something that he used to yeah, do every me, single day. Give me some gems, with Every baby. time he would walk in, he would scream, like, ah! Like, you know, like the top of his lungs and be like, are you guys turned down today? Like, the king is here. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, let's go. And then whoever, whoever didn't scream, they was like, yeah, he used to be like, you're turned down. Uh, okay, and that's how okay. we used to start our day every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he'll call you at 5 a.m. in the morning like, you, what are you doing sleep? Like, you know. <laughs> so he was like the early bird guy. Nah. Um, we always got to the studio real early. He's like that Kobe Bryant. Yeah, uh, early got breakfast, but like. He was like, he was always on his thing called YouTube University. So anybody that always pulled up to the studio before they even walked in the studio, he would give them some game or be talking about something that he learned or watching some documentary about, you know, technology or like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of what's going on in the world right now. Like he was always on that. So he was like the guy that was like, he didn't go to college, but he had the college knowledge and he would give it to college you knowledge. know uh artists and people and they like man you'd be surprised the artist that would sit down and be in there sitting down and listening like a student to nip because he was genuine about it like he just had a really like a, a, a certain wisdom to him that you didn't didn't see in many artists you yeah know what i mean right and you know the kind of wisdom that an artist has that's been in the game for a while, like a hove, and that's just really done, you know. And he was right there, you know. Oh, he, right oh yeah, he was right yeah, there. He was right, right there. at that precipice yeah. of just, God, right, yeah, there. right there. And, yeah. and Victory Lab was going to take him, you know, there, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Ah, oh, man, I'll never forget. I remember the, the day uh, he passed. I was on the air. Uh, I was here in the building. I was on the air. It was on a Sunday, I think. I'm pretty sure it was on a Sunday. Was it a Sunday? Yep, yeah, it was on a Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I was on. I was doing my air shift, and uh, both got the news that he had been shot. I announced it on the air, and it wasn't even a couple hours later. I got the news that he had passed. Hardest air shift I ever went, I've been through, man. I mean, like I remember, I was on the air uh, when Michael Jackson died. That mm -hmm. was a hard day, also. Yeah. Wow. I, mean, I was like, I mean, I've been doing this for a while. Don't let the baby face fool you, man. But that was like in 2010, I think. Yeah. You know, um, same thing. I was here, <clears throat> had to get through the air shift, and I remember watching his uh, his funeral services live mm -hmm. uh, on a computer. Just right here in the other room, but uh, man, y'all remember where you were when yeah. I? I was at the studio. I called Keys. Mm -hmm. I was I was at home on a Sunday. He had called me. I didn't. I my didn't. My daughter know. was born that Thursday. Who's my your daughter? daughter was yeah, born. Yeah, my daughter was born that Thursday, Thursday after or before. The, before, so that okay. Thursday <laughs> night, that Sunday, mm -hmm. and I like. Um, I just went. I was just happened to be at the studio that day. And I remember, like, my mom, my family, and everybody was there, and they was like, you don't have to come home. Like, you Did know? somebody call you? Did you get an alert? Yeah, an uh, 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 artist named Reason from TDE called me and told us. But when he told me, and he was like, yo, Nip got shot, the first thing I thought, I was like, I'm like, oh, he got shot. He's good. Like, You know, when you hear that, but then 
our right hand called us that's from the same neighborhood, and he was like, it's not good. So when he called us and when Dion called me and told me, I'm like, yeah, that's when I knew. And it was like everybody, like everybody that was close with it, like we were all at steel. So that was a crazy day. After hearing, I mean, what do you do? You just you, you sit there and just wait for news? I mean, Man, what you, can you do? You know, what do you Everybody started pulling up to the studio because, you know, we had a studio together. So Nipsey used to have the room downstairs. So everybody just came and just hung out in the vibe because that's the place where he was at the most was in the studio. Even if he didn't work, he would be be there. So I think everybody just wanted to pull up and feel the energy like um, when that happened. But, yeah, that was, you know, for us, we spend so much time with him. It don't even feel like he's gone. I know that feeling. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but we spent a lot of time together. Like, so we spent so much time. The memories were so good that I don't, like, we were sad at the funeral and we cried. But then I thought about it and I'm like, Nipsey, it'd be like, why are you guys crying? Like, come on. You know? That's what he would say, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just, we kind of just move in his spirit and energy and, you know, like, as if he was here. That's how we treat it. Like, I don't treat it like, I'm sad he's not here. I treat it like, well, he's here. He's just physically not here. Mm. But his his energy that we had together is here. How did you guys feel after uh, after he passed and you started seeing, uh, you know, his face just everywhere, like on murals and, uh, you know, all over L.A.? Did you? Man, that was tough, man. Like, I've never experienced anything like that before. It's like knowing somebody personally and yeah. not – being able to get away from it, mm. like everything you watch, NBA, TV, and he he was Every literally just everything. everywhere. It yeah. was just like it was. Actually, I was kind of uh, like honored that I knew him, but at the same time, I'm like, dang, I don't want to keep seeing this all the time, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But but it was it was a crazy experience. I've never experienced nothing like that before. Man. It was fun though. I mean, like the great thing is we documented, you know, like us making victory lap and, and stuff like that. So you guys ever plan to release any, any, well, I know, you like know, they're doing the, the documentary, the, documentary, the um, uh, LeBron's company, um, Spring Hill, they're doing the Nipsey documentary and we shot it like what, two, like a year ago. Like a year ago. It's already yeah. done. Well, I don't know if it's done, but I know it's going to be a big thing. Like a full length doc, like a movie or like a documentary. We showed everything. Okay. We showed everything. Is, it, is this like a, a Netflix release, like movie? We, uh, we, like, yeah, we don't know. We don't. We don't know. We just know that it's it's like. Y'all gonna be in that? Yeah, we we have. I think we have like our own segment. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get interviewed or how does a? It was wild. Just, like this was the first time we had like a thousand cameras in our face, like while we're talking and like showing how we produced it and like we they we did some of it at the um, the studio that we did the album at, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like us and. Everybody that was involved, Nipsey's engineer, those are the people that were really there every day. That segment that you guys had, do you feel like uh, you guys did did him justice? Oh, yeah. Uh, for his, oh, his, yeah. his legacy. Sure. And, uh, oh, yeah. Because it's authentic. Yeah. It's not like, you know, a lot of those, it's like a, when Nip died, we've seen a lot of people acted like they was a part of it or was there. But, you know, we was really, really there. You know what I'm saying? And, that was the great thing. Outside of making the music, like, we had, like, real bonds and memories that we, you know, uh, like, shared and, like, videoed. And, you know, we always knew what he, what Nip was, why he was alive, if that makes, you know? Like, we treated him how everybody treats him now. We did that when he was alive. Mm -hmm. So... What an amazing story, man. For, for y'all, with him and just, uh, I mean, we're here to, to, you know, big up your guys' you know, success and everything. And, you know, um, just what you guys have been and what you guys are going to do. But what you guys have been through with him, uh, you know. I mean, he's you, part of it. He's part of it. That was, he's that's he's part a big of part of it. Yeah, I mean, for us, like, we had, like, and Nip will tell you, we had plaques and stuff and Grammy nominations before we even was working with him. Mm. So he would take our plaques and hang them up in his studio for inspiration mm. to be like, I'm going to get my own plaques, mm. you know? So to be able to like get nominated for a Grammy and 
be double platinum and pretty much every song on the album is platinum with or, your friend though well, yeah with your friend <laughs> to us is like more legendary than like having a song on a a, a famous artist that we don't know mm -hmm. it's way better than like exactly. we created this from scratch mm -hmm. and we went platinum basically <laughs> How you say from the you know from the garage I guess you know yeah. I would say from the root to the fruit yeah mm -hmm. sure you know what I mean man what an experience bro Mike and Keys are in here people Mike and Keys nah. let's go nah. where are we going from here man I don't want to keep you guys all night you know I could really I swear you know I re I really hope Bridge brings you guys back you know what I mean just come back at your own now nah, we pace. family we're you know, family now uh, yeah Riverside we a hop skip and a jump are you in L A or were you uh, where do you guys yeah, yeah we're in L A Look, yep. man, slide through. You know, you guys always got a home here at KGGI. You know, I do the night show here, slide through anytime, man, because I, I, I can go stories and st I can listen to you guys talk for, and not just about the nip uh, era of your life, but I feel like you guys, you know, this was kind of a last minute uh, thing put together as far as the interview goes with Reg. Um, and I feel like I didn't have enough time to do my uh, artist prep, but I did a lot, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, and I had a lot, you know, look, look check this out, man. We got some things to ask you guys. Like I wrote notes, you know, and you guys are in here. Um, and I probably won't get to half of that today, but uh, but it'll leave more for next time. You know yeah. what I mean? You guys' <laughs> story is, is is not anywhere near finished. You know what I'm saying? And uh, where are we going from here, fellas? What are we what what are we doing? I mean, our our next step is to just right now. The next step is just we've just been building our brand, um, and just. Uh, we we started a label with our friend Mars. From, I heard I heard uh, about that. What's it called? Uh, MMK. MMK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Mars from fifteen hundred or nothing. We started mm -hmm. a label and we're just gonna be putting out music and kind of just learning how to function on our own, mm. you know, with the music. Um, and that's like the next step. And we want to just grow and get better as uh, producers, as people, and you know, just grow and you know, see what happens from here. All right. Um, the current project is Ten Toes Down. You know what I mean? KC Veggies. Uh, anything you guys want to let them know about that? I mean, like I told you guys when, I, when, I first, when we first met <clears throat> outside the studio, I love the project. It's amazing. It slaps. It is no skips. It's just too damn short, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's got five <laughs> tracks, five amazing tracks on it. Uh, the lead, is there a lead single or are you guys just... Yeah, the lead single is uh, Sunset Marquee. Sunset Marquee. Um uh, you know, I was hooked from the very first joint. Uh, what was it? Let me let me grab it real quick. I'm sure you guys know, but I'm about to bring it up. Uh, well, the Ten Toes Down joint, yeah. which is yeah. number one. Yeah. yeah. Um, Samba music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was, I'm saying that's like, you know, we're inspired by some Samba. If you listen to it, it's Samba. Like, yeah, Samba. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was very, uh, like I said, you know, you guys have the, it's very, it's not just drums, you know, it's just, it's it's soulful, man. It's very melodic. It's, you know, yeah. I hear the keys and I just, you know, it's just, uh, it's very, it's an amazing, it's an amazing project. Only five tracks. Yeah. But it's okay, man. Are we got, what are we going to get 20, 20 toes down next? We, you know what I mean? What? Uh, yeah. Um, we have a, we already have a deluxe finish with Casey. We did. Um, we we have a lot of music with Casey. We've known him since he was 16, so that's like our real little brother, you know, in the music industry. So, um, it's it's a lot of music we have with him. You guys got another project out that you uh, released in February called Formula One, which mm -hmm. I also took a look at, uh, you know, on a drive down here today uh, to talk to you guys about. Which uh, we don't have to talk much on it, but uh, I enjoyed it, man. But it's only instrumental. I, I never really... Uh, who else puts out projects that are just instrumental? Do, do, do producers do that? Yeah. yeah. Well, Nothing? Well, we got inspired. Well, you know, Quincy Jones used to do that back in the day. And, you know, back in the day, they would put out just music. And so a lot of... Well, Redman is our goddad in the music industry. So he roasted us one day, like, five years ago and was like, I should just take your guys' beats myself. It's on our first instrumental album, and he said I should just take your guys' music myself and put it out myself. Red Man is your goddad in the music industry. What you, what, like, you mean, what you mean by that? Like he's our mentor, like mentor. A, like he'll call us and be like, "Don't do that, do that." Yeah, why wasn't he on that list? On what? On Red Man? Oh yeah. yeah, he's your favorite rapper's. He's your favorite, favorite rapper's favorite, favorite rapper. rapper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at all, he wasn't on there at all. I mean, maybe after twenty, I don't know. But we that's why I said, who, like, who's who? I we need names yeah. for that list. Billboard is not enough. We need a name. Yeah, who does write these things? You know what I mean? <laughs>
Anyway, where can they find you, man? Mike and Keys, where are they going to follow you online? All that good stuff. Let them know. Um, Instagram. Mike underscore N underscore Keys for everything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple Music, Spotify, mm-hmm. it, YouTube, Google. Everything. Man, everywhere. Everything. <laughs> everywhere, man. Mike and Keys, can we get a hand clap, y'all? Right here, 991 KGGI. It's Nick Knack. This is the Jump Off to the Rockstar Radio podcast as well. Thank you guys so much for being a part of it, man. Oh, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. True rock stars, man. I can't wait to talk to you guys again, man. Thank you, sir. We enjoyed this very, very much, man. Thank you, guys. Sir. Hey, let's go. Rockstar. Rockstar. Rockstar Radio podcast.